Thank you. Our honorary degree recipient today is a friend, a mentor, a mensch, an inspiration, but to most people an actor, a director and a producer of great note and a Lambda alumnus. He, his accolades include a Critics' Choice Award, two NA, NAACP Image Awards, an Ian Charlson Award, a Royal Television Society Award, as well as nominations for two Golden Globes, two Primetime Emmy Awards, a Screen Actors Guild Award, two Screen Nation Awards and a BAFTA Award. And there's one that should, he should also have been nominated for some uh, for an Academy Award, in my opinion, but there you go. That's <laughs> services to drama. David was born in Oxford to Nigerian parents and grew up in London and Nigeria. And he came to Lambda in the mid-1990s and graduated in 98. And Lambda became a special place not only because it gave us David, but also it gave David his lifelong partner, Jessica, his wife, who's not here today, but is back at home and very, very proud of us. Um, and during his time at Lambda, he demonstrated well, she pissed off. Maybe she, she's... <laughs> I'll give her a text later and find out. <laughs> During his time here, he demonstrated an exceptional grasp of world theatre, most notably the classics. Playing in his first year, Francisco in The White Devil, directed by Robin Cartier. <laughs> Uh, he went on to play a wide variety of roles, including Puck in A Midsummer Night's Dream, the Duc de Carmont in A la Rechot. I printed this in the smallest, smallest writing of my school. And I might have to put my glasses on. A la Recherche du Temps Perdu. <laughs> Just about. And uh, the title role in David Copperfield, which is a lot easier to say. <laughs> Within four months of graduation, this guy was well on his way. It's a bit of a daunting path to follow. Uh, David reunited with James Kerr, playing King Palas uh, Palas Palascus? Palascus, thank you, David. Uh, and Iskus is the supplants. The Royal Shakespeare Company followed with Anthony and Cleopatra, Volpone, Oronoco, and finally, within three years of graduating, becoming the first black actor to play an English king at the RSC in the title world. <laughs> play in 2001 and that's when I first heard of him. Uh, a wonderful uh, Alexander teacher called Glenn MacDonald said there is a light out there, there is a startling channel to something beyond. Technically he's as gifted as all get out but there is something pure, essential and channeling about this boy, this man. You've got to go and see him and I did and I was blown away. That was David. So, uh, then in 2005, David and James Kerr reunited again and went back to Greece, this time to Aeschylus' Prometheus, opening in London and subsequently transferring to New York. Michael Billington put it rather nicely in The Guardian, summing up David's extraordinary contribution and ability in the play. David Yellowo's performance in Prometheus, his struggle both internally and externally against his fate, is astonishing. But Yellowo's fur seeks to break his chains like some imprisoned animal. He also lends the play much-needed emotional variety by moving from wounded pride, I saved mankind and found suffering for myself, to vengeful satisfaction in the prospect of Zeus's fall. Far from being a passive victim, Yellowo becomes a heroically active force, fighting strenuously against his captivity, and perhaps that, in the end, is where the play's real modernity lies in its moving Mandela-like image of the individual's power to resist oppression. Not a bad review, and <laughs> one that ties David's political and social standing in the world as an advocate for justice and charity in a very pure form within his art. He also appeared uh, after that in a production of The White Devil, which is well another link. My wife took over from Jessica, who I presume got a better job, but was going to be in his company's production in Brighton and they became very good friends. And after that, he also played, as we know, the title role in Othello alongside Daniel Craig as Iago at New York's Theatre Workshop. And on TV, he has played numerous starring roles. These include Danny Hunter in Spooks, where I first met David as, uh, I don't know, maybe we were trying to figure this out, maybe the third job I did. 
very, very nervous. I'd done a lot of spook watching. I had the spook speak down. David came in to interrogate me with Matthew McFadden, and they were both super cool, talking about the day, what they had at breakfast. I was just sitting there watching these two sort of icons of that series and ready to give it my all. And afterwards, they were like, Oh yeah, that was quite good. You've been, you've been watching this series, haven't you? Yeah, that's, that, that's interesting. What, what's your name? <laughs> and a friendship and a mentorship and uh, a, dear, a dear person in my life um, began there, really. Um, also, uh, gosh, he's played Kemi Tobodo in Blood and Oil, brilliantly. Gilbert in the BBC's adaptation of Andrea Levy's Small Island, which I was lucky enough to be in with him again. And he also starred alongside that with Nikki Anuku Bird, another Lambda graduate, and also in the brilliant Born Equal. On film, uh, and also I should say Silo, obviously, which many of you now might have seen, and uh, he's got an amazing badass part coming up in Bars Reeves. Uh, I think that's a David we've not yet seen before. I'm very excited to, to watch that come November the 5th? 5th, 5th. <laughs> yeah, I've got your plug-in, I've got your plug-in. Okay. Um, on film, he starred in The Middle of Nowhere, The Paperboy, and The Midnight Sky. In 2014, he famously played civil rights activist Martin Luther King in Selma. And he and his wife Jessica also started their own production company, Yoruba Saxon Productions, which has co-produced movies including The United Kingdom, Come Away, Five Nights in Maine, The Waterman, Captive, and Nightingale. One of the main reasons for starting the company, he says, was to have a voice and to also provide a voice and a place for voices that weren't being heard. And boy, has he done that. And at the moment, David's developing a new series called Biafra with the BBC. He has described as one of the most treasured projects uh, that he's got going, satisfying his desire to see African stories told at the highest level. Um, I've been lucky enough, like I said, to work with David on a number of occasions. My wife and him are personally connected. He has given me the best advice as to how to be a human being in this industry, let alone navigate its many difficulties and lows and highs. He is one of the wisest men you'd ever hope to meet, one of the most generous, kind-hearted. He has the most beautiful, roundest face that you just want to see smiling <laughs> all the time. I, I mean, to make him happy is a, is a, is a, is a goal every single time. Um, and whether it's falling flat on my face or saying something genuinely funny, I try, I do try. Um, I've had the great privilege to be introduced by him and by Chiwetel to a great charity in LA, don't run by a friend of ours, Afan, called Gianco, which sends out experienced and inexperienced doctors to perform highly needed surgeries in places in Nigeria where they would not otherwise be happening. And I don't want more to say to this guy. He, he means the world to me. He's an inspiration to watch as an actor. And this has been one of the honors of my life to introduce you to today's special, special recipient. And now I have to say something in Latin, correct? Okay, so to the Lambda Chairman,